You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M-Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy, as always, with my KU loving friend, Dan. What is going on, my my friend? Oh, you know, just being a national champion, you know, nothing... uh... Nothing new, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, by the time people are listening to this, you either had a, a, a great win over Kansas State or uh, it didn't yeah. go so well. But, yeah, I can't really get into it. You know, you really don't acknowledge the the smaller teams. You know what I mean? I did see a, I don't know the name of them. I'm not a big college basketball guy. You know that. But I did see a pretty hilarious interview with the Kansas State head coach. And yeah. he was like, I was like, oh, no, this guy. Like, it's just not great. Uh, everyone like, just love everyone. Pretty just, much. We need to love everybody. And we let them live rent free in our head. And we just need to be our. And I was like, oh, this is it was given That's... out. No offense to I got a lot of K, K, uh, Kansas State friends. I, you know, mm. hey, I got no dog in the fight. It was given given off extreme little brother energy. Did they what do your friends say? Did they like that? Well, the two friends I was talking about were KU friends. So oh, they were okay. laughing, but then the, my, one of my colleagues, one of my colleagues was from Kansas state and she was like, ah, I, I, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. So. It's just like, yeah, could we uh, spend less time hating other teams and more time loving our team or whatever? And I'm like, okay, kumbaya motherfucker. Yeah, it was <laughs> the only thing I could relate to is like, if the, if, you know, Chip Kelly, UCLA's head football coach came out and was like, can't we all just get along in Los Angeles and let's, let's not worry about USC so much. I'd be like, oof, you know, that, that doesn't play well. Yeah. So, well, but, it's always, uh, I love when teams are ranked in the top 20, top 25, and they're in the same conference. Like, that's it's part a, of the rivalry. That's the fun of it. It's a when you're deal. both good and you, and you hate each other. Oh, and yeah. You want to go at it. Ugh. Well, that rivalry, it's all about Dylan's. Uh, they, they make, you know, they sell the merch and stuff at Dylan's <laughs> for the Sunflower Showdown. So, we love Dylan's. Uh, so, hey, yeah. Well, congrats to the team that won. How about that? (laughs) Go sports. (laughs) Uh, We have a great show. Very exciting show for 2023. We uh, we teased it last week that we were trying to get uh, Sporting Kansas City head coach and technical director, or excuse me, manager and sporting director, I think is his technical title, title, uh, Peter Vermees, on the show. And we did. We talked to Peter. So we're going to play that for you in just a little bit. Yeah, I got some I got some thoughts, but whoa fun interview a crazy thing we're gonna talk about that here in a little bit uh no new uh reviews to read this week if you haven't left us that five star rating and review please go ahead and do so on apple Podcasts or spotify but uh we did get an email that i want to yes. read from a nice fan uh, a nebraska resident yep. uh chris gan is his name and he just said hello from omaha i wanted to reach out and thank hello. you guys for the great coverage of kc soccer i've become a big sporting kc fan over the last couple of years and love that i have a place to listen to all things sporting my two right sons here. play for Sporting Nebraska youth teams, and myself am a grassroots soccer referee. We are a soccer family, as you can probably tell. I use Spotify in my car as I commute to work a few days a week and love listening to you guys during my drive. I had the pleasure of making it to four games last year, including the Open Cup game against our local team, Union Omaha, which, by the way, that was a fun game. Omaha brought <laughs> for us. Quite, yeah, but I mean, hey, it was like no, the biggest game of their career. They bought a good little contingent out. It was, exactly. it was a good time. I'm glad they could all come out and and witness that. Yeah. Uh, Chris continues, I love your opinions and off-season analysis going on right now, and you always do a great interview. Foreshadowing. Uh, (laughs) Keep up the great content. Five stars from me coming your way. No, I love that. I got that. I saw that email, too, uh, in the inbox. And uh, good words, Chris. Thanks, man. We love having you north Mm -hmm. of the the border there from us. And, uh, you know, you're welcome anytime. Hit us up if you're ever in town. I know we got a couple yeah. of people we know uh, that come in from an Omaha area. Yeah, we got a few. One of our OG listeners, Bob, is, is from that mm-hmm. area, so makes the right. drive down. So Absolutely. Yeah, he, uh, he gave me a Nebraska Bug Eaters FC scarf that I got hanging in my other room. So. Yeah. Yes, he did. And he uh, didn't he give us another one? He probably did. No, Bob- he gave us the Union Omaha one. Uh, that's right. It was like their inaugural first match scarf or something. I, Bob's great. Bob's, yeah. Bob, Bob's been a long time listener. So shout out Dude, to all of our Nebraska listeners. Bob. Okay. Shout out to Bob in general. He said we could stay at his freaking house he if did. sporting <laughs> played up there. And I was like, what? That's nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> One of the nicest people. So, yeah. you know, appreciate that. But now Chris McGann uh, and Bob, they're about to have a nice off. Chris. Just yeah, saying. Just, just nice people from Nebraska. 
So <laughs> unless they're watching Nebraska football and then they just get sad. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> nice and um, sad. But no, we got a, the interview that we're going to kick it to in just a little bit. But first, we want to talk about a pretty cool initiative that Sporting Kansas City is kicking oh. off here. Uh, I think it's cool, at least. I don't know. Okay. There's been some some takes online. Uh, but Sporting Kansas City launched what they call the Sporting U Pass for college students at over 240 universities <laughs> nationwide. And that's basically, a lot of universities. I mean, I, that's what almost any college kid out there. I guess. So, I guess they're trying to even you know. I'm assuming they're targeting people who live in the Kansas City area, but they could be attending a university anywhere. So they're coming back yeah. for summer, you know, want to go to a game. But essentially, Sporting Kansas City announced the launch of the Sporting U Pass, a new season long initiative for college students to purchase $15 tickets in the supporter stand at Children's Mercy Park for home matches this year. And it says students at more than 240 universities across the country are eligible to receive the exclusive ticket offer through the Sporting U Pass by simply entering their school email address, and additional colleges will be added throughout the season. So, uh, feels, feels like the early cool. days of Facebook. Yeah, you got, you got to be a college kid. Look, I'm not I'm not trying to out myself here, but my .edu email address still works. Hey, there so you go. If you the... ever get tired of the press box, come on down. <laughs> come on down to the cauldron. Uh, no, this, I mean, look, I think Sporting Kansas City hasn't, and I don't think they have to do this because they've been pretty good at selling out or close to selling out games for however many years now. But mm-hmm. I think this is a cool way to reach out to potentially a new generation of fans that are maybe not yet at full purchasing power. They haven't graduated college yet. They don't have full-time jobs, but $15 to go to a match here and there, that's certainly something that could hook people. It only takes one sporting game to get hooked and, and become a fan for life. So I think this is a, a good idea. Only takes one game. We've both talked about our experience at our very first game, and here we are talking to peter vermees it, it's just wild man it takes one freaking game dude and so this overall this is great this is great um i think there's probably people within the cauldron that wishes this didn't have to happen and you know uh i don't know cauldron's become a weird place over the years right um it, it started it started rowdy and just kind of got rowdier and hmm. um i don't I don't know what the identity is. I don't know if everyone goes consistently to their tailgates. Um, I've heard of people feeling like, okay, they say all are welcome, but they really felt excluded from things when they showed up to events. They they felt very clicky. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't speak from the experience because I haven't been to those events. Um, I did see a man get choked in the cauldron. That was a one-off. I I did see a man choke another (laughs) grown man because he stole the man's seat in a section where there aren't reserved seats. So I don't know what the problem was. <laughs> yeah. It's who knows. I look, I think the alcohol, cauldron, dude, a lot of booze flowing over there. So you never know what's going to happen. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of booze flowing. And, you know, sometimes the cauldron and we might have cauldron listeners, you know, uh, sure. that listen to this podcast. And I think overall the cauldron has been very good for sporting Kansas city. Um, they always have the drums there. They're always beating it. There are, have been some times where it hasn't been as full as maybe some of the other, uh, clubs that you see their supporter section um, and I think um, maybe the club has noticed if there has been a criticism of the cauldron neither of us are cauldron members you used to sit there you used to you know pay to be a member or whatnot if there is um, a criticism to be had of the cauldron and and this is probably a similar criticism to uh, you know supporter sections across MLS across soccer really in general is there have been people that have said sometimes at least as a newcomer or as an outsider it can, it can feel sometimes like you're walking into a little bit of a click. And yeah. I don't think that, in my experience at least, I don't think that is necessarily intentional uh, on behalf of, of the Cauldron members. I can only speak uh, for my own personal experiences. Other people might have different experiences. Uh, but what I do understand is that as somebody, the first time I sat in the Cauldron, uh, it was a big game. The energy was great. I didn't really know what was going on. There wasn't a lot of help or instruction. It was kind of like a fit in or fit out type feel. So I could understand how uh, that is potentially something that somebody might feel. Uh, this is a good way that the club is trying, I think, trying to revitalize the momentum of the mm-hmm. cauldron. And I think this is a good first step to attracting new youthful energy that can hopefully uh, bring some good support to the club. So. Inject some, uh, inject some young blood. You know what I mean into the situation. Not saying, not saying the cauldron's getting old and dying off or anything like that. No, not just, at all. Uh, 
you get new people in there. Um, I don't know, man. Leadership has a lot to do with things, too. Uh, I don't mean to put everything on the Cauldron president. I don't really know her. Never really. I've spoken to her a few times, but uh, I'm sure she's great. But I think that, uh, you know, just this will be nice to get new people in and maybe things things don't change unless you get people in positions of participation, uh, power, if you will. Um, I don't know. The, the supporters group I remember as the cauldron when I first started hanging out in like 2014, uh, it has definitely changed over eight or nine years. So, yeah. And there are a number of different um, supporter sections that technically make up the cauldron in general. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's, I think this it's is just a lot. There, there's a lot of, I've noticed a lot of male aggressors over there. Yeah, uh, but guess what? A lot of booze will do that to you and bring out the actual worst person in you. And then, of course, they get like free booze over there. Rob Heineman will be like, hey, I'm serving free beers. And everyone's like, cool, I'll take seven. Right. And it's just it's just the way it is. And I feel that uh, everyone also thinks they know more than everyone else. And it's like, let's just let's just be a little humble here and yeah. try to be all on the same level. We're just here to enjoy a game. You don't have so, to put everyone in their place and say that you're the best soccer fan. No, this will be this will be good. Uh, I'm excited for it. Let us know what your experience is in the cauldron. Good. Uh, hopefully, hopefully many, many more good experiences than bad. And I know most people probably have had good experiences in the cauldron, and that's very good. So uh, let us know what, what it's like for you uh, in the cauldron. Uh, definitely but, would like to hear your experience. I think their main take is going to be like, oh, my God, $15 for for having a college email address. I'm paying $30 a ticket. Yeah. Well, hey, if you're like me, you still got that .edu. Oh my god! I'd be able you, to snag it. You gonna try that shit out? I don't think you no, have to now since Peter Meese is our best friend. That's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the only other thing, really, um, maybe to talk about before we kick it to this Peter Vermees interview, is a uh, couple of SKC two signings that were announced uh, since our last recording. Uh, there, there was one that kind of stuck out to me a little bit more. I don't know if you read anything about this, but there is a twenty-year-old winger. Uh, Amadou Traore, who was signed uh, ahead of the 2023 season. This one's interesting to me uh, because he has 20 appearances for Bo Bordeaux in mm -hmm. Ligue 1, or Ligue 1, if you want to translate it to English, uh, in mm. uh, the, the French League. Um, so uh, he scored 30, uh, seven goals in 37 matches for Bordeaux 2 uh, in the French third division as well. But uh, this is an interesting signing. This is, I think, a, a low-risk, high-reward young signing from Paris to come for SKC too, uh, maybe develop him. And then maybe you see in a year or two, he might start moving and, and getting some first team minutes. If he really pans out to how his potential sort of is laid out. This name popped to me and I don't know if it was the last name or something. Why do we know this person? Where, well, where did this I, come from? Academy I don't kid? know. I don't know if he has any relation. I, I don't think he does because uh, Adama Traore, who is a, a, a striker, um, in the English Premier League, who is mm. the most jacked soccer player you'll ever see in your life. I think he's from from Spain, and this guy's is that, France. So we've spoken about the, him on here. Yeah, because he looks. You like sent he's me like, his picture, and you were he's like an NFL linebacker. Okay, you sent me his picture, and we like gawked over his body for like ten minutes. Yeah, we might I remember have this him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe a bit. We'll <laughs> we'll backtrack just, that. I mean, look at his picture; you'll see why. <laughs> so, <laughs> look him up. The dude is like dude looks like Derrick Henry is playing striker. It's like, bro, let's go out. You lead the way because you're going to protect <laughs> me from anyone that wants to mess with me. <laughs> right. So, but uh, that's that was the first thing I thought of when I heard Traore. I was like, oh, is the relation? Nope. Adama Traore, Spanish footballer. This is a that's French footballer. Uh, so I don't believe there's any uh, relation there, but that's where the Traore name went. Okay. But I'm just excited. This is this seems like a potential solid investment into an SKC2 player who could eventually pan out. And, and he might not. Who knows? But... We all know the pipeline for SKC2 is developed there and come to the first team. So 100%. I like this. It's for young kids, man, and and get them a little experience uh, in a good level. Not that he needs it because he was playing in France on a pretty big <laughs> stage. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah. And I would imagine the French third division, I mean, that, that might be comparable to MLS Next Pro. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's not a huge – but, I mean – for a winger, seven goals and 37 matches. I don't know his assist totals or whatnot. Transfer market doesn't necessarily track all of that um, as well as I'd like. But all in all, I'm excited. Potential there. There's some other SKC2 signings. So we'll uh, we'll see. They'll supplement the Academy kids, and, and we'll see how this goes. 
Totally. Absolutely. So uh, before we kick it to our uh, interview with Peter Vermees, I do want to let you all know a little bit about DraftKings. Uh, The NFL playoff action continues, and we're one step closer to Super Bowl 57 and the NFL divisional round of the playoffs. Wildcard round was crazy. Lots of insane comebacks. So, uh, yeah, let's just stay calm here. Okay, let's stay calm. God bless you. Uh, But check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. That means the more you add, the more you can get a boost of your winnings up to basically doubling what your winnings would be. It's pretty crazy. It's an insane deal. Uh, So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code NOOTHERPOD. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL Divisional Round and get $200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code NOOTHERPOD. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. It's time, man. It's time. Oh, should we let's, bring him in? Let's kick it over to our interview oh with God, the one, the it. only, Peter Vermees. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We are back with Peter Vermees, manager and sporting director of Sporting Kansas City from Arizona, where the team is currently having preseason. Peter, thank you so much. How are uh, how are things going in Arizona? Uh, good. Um you know, uh, preseason is always uh, the same. It's a bit of a grind, I think, for the players. Um, I also think the first week is usually the week where you kind of just want to get everybody back into the rhythm of the everyday soccer, and then you can really start focusing on what you want to do. But um, all in all, so far, so good. Awesome. Uh, you know, Peter, uh, Sporting was playing about as good as anyone at the end of the season last year, but obviously just missed out on the playoffs, kind of a too little, too late situation. But the momentum was fierce. And how do, how do you keep that momentum going throughout the offseason? Yeah, it, 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 it's not – I mean, it's good to end well, right? <clears throat> uh, but it's, it's all new. And I think what happens is no matter – even if you bring all the same guys back the next year – things are going to change uh, and things are going to be different. And so I think the real, uh, you know, focus always is, is try to get the team to understand that there's a way we want to play. There's a way we want to play when we have the ball. There's a way we want to uh, play when we don't have the ball to try to get it back. And then, and then at the end of the day, we also got to be resilient enough to deal with the adversity that goes throughout the season. I mean, unfortunately last year, <clears throat> it was really a little more than, you know, most teams could, could handle. I like, like you just said, I think second half of the season, we're much better. Um, that will be reassuring. We've also added some other players. So I hope that uh, that's going to be a, a, a good opportunity to get a good start as opposed to last year. If I remember correctly, I believe last year was the first year in, in the designated player era that an MLS club has gone an entire season with two of their designated players out for the entire year. So now that you're hopefully getting – Polito and Keen to back at, at some point in the in the relative near future from injury. Uh, do you or, or do you get the sense that the, the team, even though you said it's a little bit of a different team than this year, do they feel like they have something to prove this year, knowing how well they played at the end of last year? They're getting two designated players back. Mm, it, it, it's a it, it's a hard question for me to answer uh, because you know I'm not them. What I do know is is that I think there's a real focus. I can tell that all the guys did their work in the off season. Which you know, this was a crazy off season with the World Cup. It it it's much. It's something we never dealt with before. This much time off. So um, for the guys to stay on top of their fitness like they did was was very important. Um, I, I do think. Look, I think every year when you're talking about putting a team together, normally speaking, you have a bunch of guys that all want to win and they're extremely competitive. What always winds up being uh, the determining factor, I think, with a lot of teams and how well they'll do is and it's not necessarily the first game. It, it usually is in that first third of the year, especially in MLS. I, I think you find out a lot about a team in what and how they're going to react when they're faced with some adversity. And the one thing that I, I took away from last year, again, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a love to win guy. I hate to lose guy. Mm-hmm. That's what I am. Okay. And 
what I took away from that season and, and the group last year is that although there was times in games, obviously you're going to have lots in, in, in focus or concentration, but the guys never lacked effort in any one performance over the course of the season. I can tell you there's a lot of teams you could see over the see over the years, and I'm not talking about uh, Sporting Kansas City, but other teams in this league, that when they haven't done well early on, they fall apart. And then they're just – you can see it's a bunch of shirts out on the field with no bodies in it. We never had that. And I, I was very, very pleased with that. Um, and what says it says a lot about the culture of the club. I, I know as a fan on the outside, you, you maybe don't – realize that because your expectation is is that hey I, I want to see the team win at the weekend hey we didn't have a good result you know there's it, it's bad it's not but there's very very good things to take away from this past year what I do think the difference is going into this year yeah of course you're going to have guys that are coming back from injury but I also think that when you don't achieve something you you tend to crave it a little bit because you haven't had it and sometimes people also take it for granted, whether it be fans or whether it be players, whether it be staff members. Um, but we can't take, take anything from, for granted from last year because we didn't achieve anything that was uh, you know, stellar or what we really want to do every year. And that's be competitive for all the different trophies that are available to us. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned, uh, yeah, I think there's different kinds of fans, right? They, some that just really uh, expect, the, you know, the top tier. And then there's us. We talked about all season last year, like uh, we're just we're right there. There's so many games and it's just we're missing it in the last five minutes or something. A late goal, you know, yeah. um, I can't imagine how frustrating that was for you and the guys. But, you know, this year, uh, Sporting brought back Zussi and Roger for at least one more year and Fontas for two more. Um, what's the. What's the most important thing about having that veteran presence on the team, particularly Zeus and Roger, who are super draft guys? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is, is that as much as I have obviously built relationships with guys over the years, um, I have to make decisions that are best for the club. Um, these aren't these aren't just ceremonial, nice guy, hey, decisions to keep you guys around. It's not that both. All three of those guys in their own way have something to add. But we'll start with Zeus first. Zeus has a body type that lends itself really well to playing as you get older because he's not carrying around this, this, this you know, big body, a big frame. Um, and at the same time, he always has taken care of himself and has, and has found a way, um, you know, to, to uh, prolong his career. And he's still competitive, he still participates, and he still uh, adds something to the team. It's also a really good mentor for Caden Pierre. Um, you know, I, I, it's easy to say for me today. I can tell you maybe in a month from now it changes, but right now Caden Pierre is not ready to take on 34-game season. He's not ready for that yet, at least not today. Mm -hmm. But to have somebody like Zussi alongside of him that can help mentor him, whether it's by example, or sometimes give him some advice, it's fantastic. And then on the other side of it is, and, and I'll get to this with, 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 with Roger as well. Roger, I never expected Roger to play nearly the minutes that he played last year, but he had to based on all the injuries. And there were some games where he was just a beast like he's always been. I don't want to use him like I did last year. But Roger, I, I would tell you, if I was leaving Kansas City, and I had to go to another club and I was allowed to take a guy with me um, right away. Roger would be in the top of the list because he has this uh, and it's natural, right? It's not forced. It's not fake. It's a genuine thing. He is a, uh, a connector of people. Um, at the same time, he has this uh, incredible uh, uh you know, one of our four core values is the team is always first. And Roger epitomizes that. He, he'll, he'll help any new guy that comes into the team. He'll help all the young guys. He'll talk to the older guys. He doesn't get um, uh, upset if he doesn't play in this next game or he doesn't start. He knows what his role is. And to have somebody with that kind of experience within the group who still can contribute in a really meaningful way in games, it's a big positive for us. Um, Fontas, he has turned into a very good player 
within the way that we want to play in our club. Um, and again, one of the hardest positions, which is crazy, uh, have we found it over the years, one of the hardest positions to find is central defenders anymore. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that when you're a team that wants to play with the ball, like wants to keep the ball. And again, I, I'm not talking about just keeping possession to keep possession. I want to, I want to build a team up or build a field up so that we can create some high quality chances because of a purposeful possession oriented team. And so he is probably, if not the, he is in the top three best passers of the ball out of that position in major league soccer, bar none. Um, so he fits well to the team. And also he's, he understands he's, he's made, he's made, uh, uh, concessions regarding his contract to help us, which is, which is awesome. And what I'd say about the three guys is, is that all three guys fit into the team so well from a personality, um, perspective, a work ethic point of view. Um, and, and if you're, you know, I've look, I've, where I think that I've been very fortunate is because I've been in one place for as long as I have, um, don't get me wrong. I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have some success with the team. I also wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in the project. But with those two things have, having had happened and can hopefully continue to happen, I've been able to be the consistency with along with a lot of other staff members and some players to continue this culture that we have, which is one of the reasons why I believe over the years that even though people always say that we've done a lot more with less, I really think it's because our culture has allowed us to punch above our weight class year after year. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's interesting you say if you could take one player, it would be Roger, because I know some of the players that we spoke to over the past you know, two, three, four years, especially if they were uh, Spanish speakers as their native language, when they joined the club, they spoke to when I got to preseason, Roger was the one who sort of took me under my uh, his wing and sort of helped assimilate me into the club and the culture. So uh, it, it really does feel like that's coming from from the players themselves, too, as in, as in addition to you as well. And and, look, and just, to, just to clarify something, and I, and I don't, I'm not saying this as a – disclaimer but sure it's not to, it's not to be disrespectful to other guys that have been here what sure. it really says a lot about is this and that is when you are in when you're secure with yourself right and you're confident with yourself mm -hmm. you're then able to to provide assistance and help to others and not everybody always has that at different points um whether it's they might have it at different points in their career but not always but right. roger has always had that Always. It's it's never been based on playing, not playing, really in good form, not in good form. He's just been a team guy that has always fought for it. And, and no matter what the circumstances were. And, and that is something to be recognized. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, this offseason, you, you've had some acquisitions. But as we mentioned briefly earlier, you also knew that you had two designated players and uh, Alan Polito and Gadi Kinda that are getting closer to returning from injury. So how did knowing that they're continuing to progress in their rehabilitation impact some of the roster moves that you were looking at making this offseason? Well, I, again, a, a good question and, and how I'd answer that. And I'd say is the first thing is, is that I have to stay optimistic and confident that they're going to come back to a place of where they were before, hopefully even better. There's sometimes your hands are also tied. It's not like they both have another year on their contract. I'm not saying sure. that I wanted to get rid of them, but you know, we have to do what we have to do sometimes in a salary cap world. Um, our objective always has been since when they got hurt and they had to go through the surgery and all the rehab they're doing was that, Hey, we wanted to keep them and, and, and hopefully turn them back into you know, the, the, the contributing very positive players that they've been in our team. Um, the other thing too is, is that, um, and this is why I think our league is very, very difficult. And I think a lot of people don't give credit to the staffs that are out there and around the league. And that is when you're in the salary cap world that we're in, um, in our sport, and it's, it's, it's not, it's different, right? If you're in the NFL, you're all competing for the same group of players and you're it. That's it. It's, it's the NFL and that's it. When we're going out into the marketplace, we're competing against the entire world. Yeah. On top of, I have all the, you know, we all have the constraints that we have in and around the different rules and, and the salary cap uh, that we do have. And so to all of a sudden make wholesale changes is, is, is very, very difficult. And what I would say is, is that a lot of coaches 
what they find out if they haven't coached in this league is you have to coach and you have to coach a lot more than a lot of other leagues because there are times where you also have to make the player work as opposed to going, ah, you know what? That's not a guy for me. Just get rid of him and let's bring another guy in that position. Sure. It doesn't work that way. And you have to work towards making those things happen and, and be on the positive side. The, the final piece that I'll say is, is I also think that you can chip away at your roster because you can also add some other guys that are younger, that are at the bottom of the roster, if you will. They may not make the 20-man roster, but maybe they'll be on the, you know, the, the 21 through 31 group. But they can have a huge impact as well because, as you guys have probably followed over the years, players you know, across your whole entire roster are getting a lot more playing time than ever before just because of congestion of schedule mm -hmm. and, and also uh, multiple competitions. Well, Peter, speaking of the worldwide market and all that competition, uh, you know, I, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about this. You've talked quite extensively at this point about the potential Ronaldo acquisition. But one thing you said to the KC star was you were going to take more chances signing players, but that the situations have to make sense for both the on the field and the off the field aspects of that acquisition. Um, that being said, what would you say to SKC fans who may have changed their expectations as to the type of player SKC might be, might go after going forward, considering that balance you're looking for? Yeah. Um, as you know, I think uh, uh, Sam did a really good job of, laying out kind of what that timeline was and what occurred. Um, Mike Gilly is the one who came up with the idea um, where obviously that situation made a ton of sense because when you look at the numbers, you're, it's one thing to get a player that can compete on the field. It's another thing to get a player like him or Messi who have just this global reach, right? And you could, you, you could take advantage of it as an organization off the field and it justifies some of the dollars that you're also putting forward, which also says that our league is changing. You know, we're 29 teams this year. You know, I have a feeling we're going to probably go to 30, 32 is probably what we're going to get to. Uh, who knows? I mean, the amazing thing is that potentially you could probably do 40 teams in our league, which would be amazing. Um, whether that's going to happen or not, that's just me <laughs> saying that. But for sure, I think probably 30, 32. But with that being said, I mean – to be competitive, um, there's a lot of teams that are investing a lot of money into their, you know, into their team, into their, into the players on their team. And I think as an, and I'm going to speak for the ownership first, they have always been very supportive of, of doing things to try to bring players in. But I, but I think again, when you look at, when you look at it overall, uh, you know, the context, you don't look at it as year and you just look at it over a, a period of time. If you just take it since I've been here, I mean, we've been extremely competitive. Um, there's probably a lot of teams in this league that would love to trade the last 10 years of, of us in comparison to maybe what they've achieved. And so sometimes you also have to be a little bit uh, weary of who you add, how you add, why you add. Um, but I do think that our ownership has the appetite to do it as long as the deal makes sense. And again, if you're talking to be able to, talking about a deal like that, you're talking about something that also has an off the field uh, punch that you normally don't. But, but again, we've never made a decision that was more just, Hey, it's all marketing and it doesn't matter on the field because everything has to start with the field first. And then if you get the bonus thereafter, then, then, then you're in a good position. Did you have to go to Johnny and say, look, if he comes number seven, you are going to have to figure something out here. No, I never <laughs> had to get that far. I, okay. I never did. Uh, so. That was good. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, acquisitions, uh, you just signed uh, Tim Leibold, uh, left back out of Germany. How do you see him fitting into the squad, considering that there's also Ndenbe and Ben Sweat who have been vying for time at that position? Yeah. Uh, first off, he's a very good player, consistent player, good in the attacking third. I mean, he's good all over the place, but he has some quality in the attacking third. Um, you know, Coaching is is obviously a unique profession. And we all throw this term around, you know, player development. There's no better developer of talent or a team than competition within the team. And it's 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 my job, it's our job as a staff to continue to improve the roster to make it more and more competitive so that week in and week out, 
we get the best performances from everyone. Um, it's not to say that any of those other guys are playing poorly, it's just that we're adding another good player to the roster. And that's, that's important to the overall complexion of our roster moving forward. Totally. Uh, Peter, what, what, uh, we got one team coming into the league this year and it's a uh, already main rivalry with St. Louis city SC. Uh, what, what are you and the guys most looking forward to with that new rivalry? First off, I think it's that they don't know it yet only because they haven't been in the league, right? They're, they're new to the league. We think it's great. Uh, it's something that we've been hoping for, for a long time. We had, a really good rivalry building with Chicago years ago um, when we were in the East and the league was a little bit smaller and it was really, cause you remember if they remember correctly, they played the inaugural game um, at children's mercy. Um, and so that, that was building up and it was great. And then all of a sudden we get moved to the West and we kind of lost that. And, you know, everybody's tried to in some way, shape or form sort of artificially kind of create one between us and Minnesota or, or, or uh, uh, maybe Salt Lake or even down because, you know, we're all kind of close in proximity or Colorado, but it's never really taken on that. But I, I'm having now been in Kansas city for going to my 23rd year. I, I understand the, the difference between, you know, St. Louis and Kansas city. I, I know the difference, right. And I know that <laughs> there's a, there's a level of competitiveness there, which is there. And I think it's great. It's great for our sport. It's great for both of our clubs. Um, and, and I think those derbies are going to wind up being, you know, uh, uh, historical events as we move forward through MLS over the years. 100%. I know the fans are all excited and the traveling support will be outstanding on both ends. Um, Peter, one last thing before we wrap up with you today. Um, you don't you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but I am curious and it's a super serious question. Um, Last year there was a match. You uh, took a little took a little stumble on the side of the uh, sideline. Yes. Uh, how was how was that? Were you, <laughs> walk us through that situation. Yeah, it's really simple. Um, I, I think you might know that I'm pretty animated on the sideline. No. <laughs> and uh, I was trying to uh, yell across the field at the time, and when I when I spun around my. You probably don't, maybe you know, maybe you don't know. So there's grass and turf that meet mm -hmm. right there on the sideline. And so as I spun, the edge of my shoe got caught oh. and I went down. But I'm going to, I'm going to now tell you, there's a, there's a much better one, which shows my, uh, my athleticism. <laughs> um, I think it was, I think it was 20. 21. I think it was 21. It was 21, I believe. 20 or 21. It was our last game of the season against Salt Lake in Salt Lake. If we win the game, we win the division. Uh, and it's it, we get to the field. It's it's uh, it's cold. Obviously, it's you know it's October, November, whatever. It's cold, but there's no snow. I go inside. The team goes out and warms up. Uh, I never go out for warm ups. Uh, coaching staff comes back in. They go, you're not going to believe this, but the whole entire field is covered with snow. <laughs> what? I, I think they're joking. I walk out, look down the tunnel. It, it's it's unbelievable how much snow fell and how fast it did. <coughs> Excuse me. So game's playing on. I'm standing in the box. And imagine I'm looking at the field this way, balls down to our right. I'm trying to tell our guys from behind to step up the field because I want to keep, keep the game compact because one small step, you, you slip, you're gone. So I yell, and as I yell, my two, my, I'm on the toes of my feet, and they slip out from under me. Oh, no. <laughs> and, I, and so imagine all of our staff is looking to the right, but I'm yelling to the left, so they're not paying attention to me, and I'm all, all the way to the corner. I go all the way down, and I go into a burpee, and I do a <laughs> – you, you ever watch um, – oh, it was Mission Impossible with uh, – yeah. uh, The Tom, wire there. What's his name? Uh, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah. When he comes down and his, his, his nose is like this far from 
I did exactly that. <laughs> we actually have it on film. Our, yeah. our uh, Ashley Wallace found it. And honestly, I go down. I go all the way down to a push-up. I never touch the ground. And I pop back up and I turn around and I looked at the bench because <laughs> I was wondering if everybody saw me and no one saw me. But we saw it later on the, the, the uh, you know, on the film. On film. Oh, but, you know, goodness. to be fair, I mean, got to give me credit for going into oh, my yeah. 15th year. You know, not too many, not too many spills on the sideline. No, pop not at back all. up like that. I we that's that's in the archives. We we hadn't heard about that at all. That's you've kept that to yourself for uh, over a year now. It, that one's great. It's a hard one to see, but once you get it, he's got it <laughs> like a loop to loop, so you can see it like thirty times. It's got some good music to it. That's great. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm sure the players had fun with it too. Oh yeah. Th- oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Peter, we don't want to take any more of your time. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope the rest of the preseason in Arizona goes well, and we cannot wait to see you back out at Children's Mercy Park this year. So thank you so much, and good luck this year. Appreciate it very much. Thank Thank you. you, sir. Have a great day. There you go, my friend. Oh, my God. Peter, for me, (laughs) we might have broken a little news there. Uh, What what part are you talking about? Well, I mean, first off, when he just admitted – Caden Pierre is not ready for a full season. That was a little he just said. Zeus is the dude, which I'm like, <laughs> you better listen. Been saying yeah. it. <laughs> so that part was interesting. Uh, when he was like, if I could take, if I were going to start a new club and I could take one player, I would take Roger Espinosa, and not even for yeah. his on play or on field play, but because of all of his off field intangibles. That yeah, was he's, that was pretty cool. He's like Roger's father. Like they are, boom, dude. <laughs> they he loves them. They love each other. But. Um, maybe the biggest news break was when he was like, I'm not only going to break down play by play the slip and slide that I had at children's mercy park, but let me tell you about an even better one that happened on the road at salt Lake in the snow. He's like, let me, let me, I, I see your fall and I raise you a snowy <laughs> fall. And I didn't even, I mean, cause the camera obviously wasn't on that. He no. was unfortunate in this game. The camera caught it. Okay. Right. That son of a gun was circled all over Twitter for weeks but the camera didn't catch this one because he no. said the ball was down on the left side of the field. Right. And he was telling the defenders to get up. And he just, he did a burpee. Of course he did. Have you seen the man? He's athletic. Right. I mean, we've seen Peter, you know, trap ball, stop balls, you know, scoop yeah. it back before. We, we knew he was athletic. We knew he was in shape. He rides uh, bikes all the time, dude. This one, it cracks me up. And he was, I, I was surprised. I was, peek behind the curtain i think we were both a little nervous to ask him about the slip and slide potentially because nervous. because when we went back end. when we went back and we asked graham zussi about the slip and slide we listened to what graham zussi said before we recorded with peter and and you asked him does anybody sort of bring that up to peter and he was like nah i don't think anybody wants to lose their job yeah i said if they value their jobs they won't but right. then i remember <laughs> going back when i talked to Kyrie shelton and Kyrie we had a great laugh about it. And he's like, yeah, Peter came in and was just like, let's get it out of the way now. And they all just watched it and laughed. And he's like, let's move forward. <laughs> yeah. it. I'm glad that we, we ended with it. It was good. You yeah. set it up perfectly. We'd gotten a little chuckle out of him before with the Johnny Russell, yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, number seven thing. Uh, it It's, I don't know. I, I had a good time. I thought it was a good mix of serious. We, we talked a lot about preseason. I thought he, he talked, I thought, pretty insightfully about the way they ended last year. And he was like, yeah, players were kind of pissed off. And he goes, and even though it's a new team this year, they're coming in, they got that fire. They worked real hard in the off season to stay in shape. Uh, and and it's, it's going to be fascinating to see how this team, even though there's some new players who maybe weren't here for it, builds off of that momentum. And he acknowledged like, yeah, we got Alan Polito and we got Gotti Kinda. That was another interesting thing he said. I'm not, I don't want to read too much into it, but when we were like, you knew that you were got, you were getting these guys back, so how did that influence off-season plans? And one thing he did offer up that I thought was a little interesting, he was like, we didn't have much choice because they're both under contract for another year. So, like I said, right. I don't want to read too much into it, but, I mean, it 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 was, you know, it, it caught my attention a little bit. Take that for what you will. Well, we're fucking stuck with them. Or it's like, well, we'll see what we can get out of them, you know? Yeah, I think it was more of a, you know, there was never a consideration to to move on because we do have them under contract for a year. So, okay, we're getting them back. We're going to continue to invest in their health and recovery as best as we can. Get them back. We know we have two good players in Eric Tommy and uh, Willie Agata. 
So now we're just going to have more competition at that spot. It's going to be insane, dude. I, if we had more time and we didn't, we had like a strict 20 to 25 minute window. When yeah. the communications team tells you how much time you have <laughs> with Peter freaking Vermees, you stay in that time zone. You yeah. don't go overboard like we have with people in the past. We could have gone another 15 minutes. Oh, we had I would have said, hey, you have position battles. Tell me about that. Like, right. what's that look like in, in training camp, you know? Well, and he we asked him about Tim Leibold. He's the third left back. And and yeah. he sort of was basically saying, you know, we've, we've followed him for a while. He, I came away thinking that Leibold's going to come in there and instantly compete for that starting job. And that doesn't necessarily mean anything about Ndenbe or Sweat and their longevity with the club or whatnot, but just that we're looking for the people who right now can make us the best, most competitive club. And yeah. competition always brings out the best in people if they want to be there. So I think this will bring out the best in both in Denbe and, and Sweat and Leibold probably. But yeah, I expect these... that Leibold's going to get some serious time. As a new person coming in, though, he's going to have to learn real fast the chip these guys have on their shoulder, the the fire they have, the salt they have in their attitude. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just coming in. He really does. He knows how the team finished last year and wants to help them improve. But he doesn't have that, like, personal feeling that personal vendetta against the league you yeah. know what i mean like in denbe and ben sweat have that because right. they played on and off consistently so that'll be interesting to keep an eye on i mean left back has been such an interesting position for sporting kansas city even in the years since we've been following you know bring back mid sinovic i mean there's been sinovic <laughs> there's been marcel de young there's been jimmy uh, madronda jimmy madronda there's been rodney wallace there's been luis martins there's been all sorts of players that have come and gone. Setsunovic was sort of the constant that kept coming back there. That's and the now guy. you can't you kill move, him. You, you move to uh, to Ben Sweat and, and in Denbe and now Leibold. So we'll see. I mean, this is this is an interesting position battle. That's probably the most interesting position battle to me outside of, you know, that center attacking midfield and striker with, with you know, the two designated players and then the two new guys from last year. Oh, very much so. Because Peter yeah. just squashed everyone's right back conversation. I mean, at this point, he, he, I mean, he was like, Zeusy's body type just allows him to age gracefully and basically play indefinitely as long as he takes care of himself. Peter, we love objectifying people's bodies. All right. So uh, let's talk about his body. <laughs> Be careful how we say that. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's not take that clip out of context, you sons of bitches. Uh, but no, I think, I think what we can expect is that, yeah, day one starting, it's going to be Graham Zeusy at right back. And we'll see if he, he did to his, you know, to be fair, he said right now on this day, as we're recording, Caden Pierre is not ready for a full season. That could change a month, two months oh. from now. We've seen players develop pretty quick as they get more time. Sure. So we could get to July, August, and suddenly Caden Pierre has developed into an everyday guy. But it's clear that he's not there yet. If he's going to be an everyday guy, he has a month and a half. Yeah. I mean, that, a month and, a half. And, and Peter said it before, too. We really have the first third of the season to see – what a team is so sure i don't like that anymore though after last year that hurts me i don't want to wait till may because yeah. when may hit i was like oh man now we actually have to say we bad <laughs> but yeah but i mean i think to his credit except for maybe one perform there was like i think it was the portland game where it got a little out of hand at the end there and but uh a game up in portland but he was like by and large the team's effort never left last year they always were yeah. trying thing you know we had a lot of hardships but the effort was there so that's what you look for yeah for but, sure Dude, i don't know man you much anything else from that that interview you want to you want to break down i mean i'm going to no. go back and listen to that you know multiple times because i think there's a lot of interesting tidbits in there much love to peter much love to the uh communications team over at sporting for making that happen um i don't even know who we interview after that because that, that seems like <laughs> well it, there's like a mountain right and that seems like the tip of the mountain so it's pretty high up there yeah i don't know where we i don't know where we go from here we go back to kit man <laughs> just <laughs> start it all over. i mean yeah he's <laughs> i mean you owe him an apology uh you know <laughs> well i think i owed zeusy an apology when he was <laughs> like as long as you didn't get kit man on before me and i was like well that's a matter true. of fact that's true. You, Zuzio is Kip Man an apology. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Zuzio does. But no, much love to Peter Vermees and, and, and the club oh, yeah. for setting that up. Appreciate it. From Arizona, where they're doing preseason. So that was awesome. Yeah, man. Thank you next. Like, who, who are we getting? You know, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll see. We'll see. 
uh, that's that's basically what I got this week. You got anything else you want to talk to the people about? Nah, dude, I don't. Let's uh, this is my new space for a bit, so enjoy it. That's uh, not as fun as my scarf wall, but here we are. <laughs> well, thank no, you. No, I have not been kicked out of my house. All right, I'm still very happy. <laughs> still very happily married. In case you were wondering. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you so much to everybody who's left that five-star rating and review or, or send us an email like Chris, uh, leave us that five-star rating and review on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at no other pod at Dan Kuser at JC max zero three, uh, check out the KCSN soccer YouTube channel where you can watch us and see Peter Vermees reacting to our questions visually. That'll Best be friends. fun. Best friends. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, shoot us an email, nootherpod at gmail.com. But uh, we'll be back next week. You know, have some actual preseason soccer to maybe talk about, even if we can't have seen it. We'll see what happens on Twitter, but we'll talk about that. Uh, but yeah, until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. Rock, chalk, and stuff.